Have you seen the movie Aliens? Not really. There's an animal called the face hugger. That's what that looks like. Oh. Well, let's eat. Ho Chi Minh City, Vietnam's most populated city with over 8 million residents. This is the place I've called home for three years. So when it comes to food, I thought I'd seen it all. But man, oh man, was I wrong. Are people really eating the head? What are they eating there? Today, I'm on a mission to uncover the most unique, most remarkably bizarre cuisine this city has to offer. Have you ever had bat wings? No. Now you'll know what bat wings are like. I'm talking hidden culinary offerings that even the most well-versed local foodies have never even heard of. You know what ISO pot is? Uh, or no? No. From a porker's ghibli bits to a deep sea nightmare. You're just pretending it's a little human baby. This is bizarre food in Vietnam. We're doing it! Yuen, welcome back to the show. Yeah. Am I saying your name correctly? Yes. Yuen? Yuen. You may remember my friend Yuen from the time we had goat hot pot with plenty of goat udder. Oh, this is yumminess. Oh. Mm. We're in a market right now. What market is this? This is Ton Hut Nam Market. Here in the heart of Ho Chi Minh City's most bustling district, this traditional market remains nearly untouched by time. Locals come here for produce and fresh street food. Today, we're starting out with a peculiar favorite, durian sticky rice from Soi Hai Yung. The only catch is the durian. The fruit they're using happens to be the smelliest fruit you'll find in all of Asia. I didn't actually experience this until I was well into my 30s. And so I had only heard scary, terrifying things about it. But the first time I tried it, I realized it's delicious. And I don't know, to me, the smell is not offensive. It's intense, but not bad. You know, in Vietnam, this one is the king of fruit. People, they only love it or hate it. There's no so-so in the middle. You I know? love it. Yeah. This one too, it's super ripe. This treat starts with sticky rice that's been cooked with green beans, giving it a yellow color. Top that with a huge pod of ripe, pungent durian. Before diving in, you gotta peel away the durian flesh and combine it with the rice. Let's try it out. Mm. Oh, that's super yummy. The actual taste of the durian is just very fruity, kind of melony, but it's got some stink to it. And when it mixed with the sticky rice, it balances the sweetness. Mm. Yeah. I feel very balanced. Today, our plan is to go throughout the city and we're looking for some kind of uncommon food. You mean like exotic food? See, it's gonna be exotic for me, but is it exotic for you? Mm, or no? No. Pork penis? That's like a daily item for you? No, 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 not really. What about an isopod? Isopod, no. Okay, so I'm gonna say it's pretty exotic for you too. Mm, yeah, yeah, yeah. We did it. I love the durian sticky rice. It's a great combination, but this is just appetizer. We have a lot more to come. Our first taste of the unknown will start here. Ku Heo Jin, a favorite for locals, a nightmare for pigs. <laughs> for years, the owner, Miss Bin, has been pleasing crowds with her delicate delicacies. Okay, how are you doing? Stay quiet. 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 Yeah. Quiet. She's good. You got a really unique menu here. Can you tell us a little bit about your menu and how long you've been doing this? So she's been doing this for like 20 years. The menus here have like more than 10 items. So she has the penis the bowels, and all the part of the big. Does she have testicles? What is testicles? Oh. Um, what is it that people love about the pork penis? So first, it's very special. Like, everyone can eat that and it's very cheap. But uh, in the past, it's not really popular. Now, thanks to the internet, it's getting more and more popular, so people keep coming back. Well, listen, thank you so much for taking the time to answer all our questions, and I can't wait to taste your penis. The dish is marinated with a local spice blend. Then it's deep fried until cooked through. She tosses on okra and morning glory and serves it with green chili sauce and tamarind sauce. I gotta say, I look at this presentation and I'm blown away. Everything I listed already in the voiceover is right here. And like six toothpicks because they assume that you're gonna share with your friends. Not true though, this was all for me. <laughs> I'm gonna try just the bear penis first. I will take the biggest. Wow. Oh, it's crunchy. And it's not really meaty, but it's like a tendon, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I'm gonna get some okra. Me too. Mmm. 
The sides are very nice, but we're not here for that. We're here for the beans. Yes. I feel like I'm eating a chicken neck. Mm -hmm. And I bet it will be better if you add some more sauce into it. Okay, I'm gonna soak this up and try it out with a little bit of sauce on there. Here we go. Very crunchy. Mmm. The fish sauce is so spicy and sweet from the tamarind. I love it. Overall, if you think about it so much, if you're picturing what it is, you're not gonna have as much fun. Point is, don't think, just chew. Coming up, deep sea monsters that will literally haunt your dreams. But before that, we're going here. Welcome to Fa Lao Vit. This street side dinner spot is run by Mr. Nguyen, who inherited the shop from his mother. It's so popular among the locals that they usually sell out in just a few hours. Thank you so much for having us here today at your restaurant. This place is wild. You've got like buckets full of every different duck part. I mean, I saw feet, there's gizzards here, there's even duck head. Are people really eating the head? What's special here is about this is the duck head and what's special about it is the way they cook it and it will taste different and better than the normal way people cook it. Oh, there's like many ways to cook a duck head? Yeah. <laughs> She's like, I don't know. I'm just translating what he said. This isn't your average duck head. As you guys know, there's thousands of ways to cook a duck head and this is like a, the most good one. I've had falao, but I've had beef. I've never had the duck one. His mother is the one who created this dish. So the way she cooked falao here is totally different from the beef falao you have before. Falao, also known as offal stew, is a popular Vietnamese street food traditionally made from cow or pig organs, stewed in a local spice blend and eaten with banh mi bread. Here, they've changed the protein using a rich spiced duck stock, saturating every single part of the duck with their savory broth. And I mean every single part. Well, hi. Hi again. I'm gonna do a little scavenger hunt throughout the bowl and see what we got here. This looks like uh, some wing, maybe like upper pectoral. Yeah. This is a blood cake, the right? Blood a cake. Blood rice yeah. cake. With the glutinous rice. Ooh, I like that. Uh, I'm gonna try a little bit of blood rice cake. How about we dip into the ginger fish sauce? Oh, okay. Mm hmm. Oh. Wow. Whoa, that's perfection. Yeah. The cake itself is like so meaty and hearty. It's waterlogged with all that broth. The fish sauce that has some chili in there, it gives it some kick. That combo is deadly. Oh, and then here, check this out. Yeah. What? Yes, that's intense. You can actually eat between the toes. Yeah. Have you done this before? Nope. Wow, there's a lot of new stuff for you today. Yeah. Honestly, it's a lot like a bat wing. Let's try it out. Mmm, very fatty, soft. It actually yeah. falls apart pretty easily. And I bet that they have stewed it like for hours to make this, this soft. Yeah, the skin is super soft and really yummy. Yeah. It would take a couple years to get full, but I do like it. Oh, and then here, the freaking duck head. So they've cut the beak off, no yeah. beaks. Then they cut the head in half. And literally here we have a cross section of a duck head. I want to dig in here and just pull out this brain. All right, cheers. Mm. Mm, creamy. Fatty. Yeah, that's all there is to it. It tastes like a brain. You guys should know by now, right? Is it your first time seeing those kind of head? In that way, yeah. It was a little scary. Uh -huh. But then you taste it and it's like, it's oh It's good, man. right? Yeah. It's like a guy with a lot of tattoos, but he's nice. Mm, nice comparison. <laughs> Snails, crab, octopuses, or even lobsters frequent the menu at most seafood street food joints. But here, they're taking it a step further. Welcome to Tom Kang Song, one of the only street food stalls in the city that also caters to high-end seafood lovers who can't wait to part with their money and devour some giant aquatic creatures. Action! Hey, how you doing? Let's get a quick pound. Oh. <laughs> Thank you so much for having us here at your seafood empire. This place is amazing. This is the guy who started it all. Mr. Hui started this seafood empire seven years ago, but in the last two years, he's introduced new, more exotic, high-end selections. 
Why do you want to go into the high-end seafood and especially the super-sized seafood? Hey, I'm going work like Usually people have to go to the restaurant to try the high-end seafood. So he wants to be the first one who bring the high-end seafood to the street food like this so everyone can easily try it. Speaking of giant seafood, you have something here that is huge and it's also one of the most scary deep-sea creatures I have ever seen. It's called an isopod. Isopods, also known as the cockroaches of the sea. These are deep-sea creatures living at the bottom of the ocean, whose job it is to eat all the dead animals that fall to the ocean floor. It's a weird job, but someone's got to do it. Oh, 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 oh my god! Oh my god! It's like a giant cockroach! Yeah, like a giant cockroach. They're huge! But who is eating this? A lot of people eat that. Việt Nam mình có nhiều người rất là giàu. So you know, rich people they like to try exotic food, like strange food or weird food. So when they come here and they see this, they definitely have to try this. I can't wait to get so rich that I'm so bored. I'm like, I need rare deep sea species. Eating this strange food is a serious financial commitment. For these two isopods, the price is over two hundred dollars. Can she hold one? <laughs> It's like a little baby! Yeah, like a little baby, and it's really cold and it's. Oh. I'll take the baby. Thank you. Ah, ah. <laughs> Here you can see the whole isopod. It has 14 legs, far more than anyone needs. And it's got this little, like, fin part, like a shrimp, and then it's got this armor coating. Oh. Oh. I just know when I was on a fishing boat in Japan, they cut open the stomach, they pull out the contents, and it was the worst smell I have ever smelled in all my smell history. A few months ago, when we caught isopods in Japan, the captain cut out their stomachs, which contained a putrid ball of rotting organic matter that smelled so toxic that this happened. Are you gonna throw up? <laughs> oh no! Here, they don't cut out the stomachs. I'm told we'll be cooking and eating everything. And uh, I, I can't wait. All right, today we're living the life of the rich. Let's do this. <laughs> oh, fuck. did you hear that laugh? That was an ominous laugh. <laughs> Today, we'll have three unique isopod dishes. As a first step, the isopods are steamed up in a street-side sauna for 20 minutes. After they're cooked through, the real fun begins. First, the Hong Kong salted isopod. This cutie is cut into pieces, then coated in flour and deep fried for a couple minutes. In a separate wok, our sidewalk chef fries up garlic, ginger, leeks, and chilies. Finally, dousing the isopod parts in a load of salty seasoned goodness. Before we sat down, mm -hmm. I talked to the owner and I asked him two possibly offensive questions. Mm -hmm. First, I asked, can we eat everything here? You may be happy to know that yes, we can eat everything except for, you know, like the hard shell. Second, I said, has anyone ever gotten sick? He said, no. Mm -hmm. It's possible someone died, but no one got sick. Mm -hmm. They just... Well, I think I'm just going to start with this one, so I'm going to try to open this up. Oh, this is a thick shell. Oh, wow. I just took it to the chiropractor. What is in there? That's meat? Yeah, I said that's meat. Um, can I give you some? Okay, just some. Okay, thank you. Let's try it out. Yeah. All okay. right. It tastes better than I imagined before. Wow. What did you imagine though? You know when you see it and it looks ugly, it looks scary and it tastes better. Well, it looks terrifying, so I don't know what that's saying very much. It's like somewhere between a shrimp and a brain. Really? A brain? Yeah. I want to come back to this head later, or maybe never. Let's try this one next. Dish 2, fried isopod with pork fat. With a sauce so blazing hot, it would burn your ears just to hear what's in it. It's hot. Look at the insides of this one. Oh, ho, ho, ho. that's good quality meat. Looks like a lobster tail. Yeah. Maybe. Mm. The tenders of the meat combined with the crunchy of the cracklings. This one is so good. I don't know how they did it, but that's really good. Yeah. We have one more course here. Our final isopod dish is easily the most intimidating. They start by cutting away the shell from the isopod's belly. Then they toss it on the grill and top it with scallion oil and peanuts. This is a shocker. This could be the main course at a Halloween party. No, but I think it's look funny, you know, like lying down on the legs up to the sky. Yeah. And a lot of peanut in your belly. Yeah. Try, what? Try. 
Oh, 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 oh. It's like scooping out some pudding. Get yourself a scoop. Hey. Oh. Wow, that's a nice Ooh, looking bite. Yeah. I want to tell you something. This is one of the scariest bites I've ever taken in my life. Really? Yeah, okay. sorry. So you should be a little scared too, because I've eaten some pretty weird shit. How do you find it? <laughs> Milky. Yeah, it's milky. I think you should tell me about this after I eat this. Sorry, I was trying to make it more exciting. Um. There's a little bit of funk in there. A little bit bitter, right? It might just be in my head. I mean, we're eating out of the stomach of an alien creature. My taste buds have never been more confused. Mm -hmm. They're so out of place right now. It's like they went to a Halloween party, but they're the only ones that wore a costume. But listen, I think we did it. Yes. This has to be the most unique food in Vietnam. Is this something you would try again? If I have money, then yes. Really? Because that's, this is for rich people, you know? <laughs> so you feel fancy? You gonna post it on Instagram? Mm-hmm. All right, listen, we did a great job. Let's get this for takeout and let's get the out of here. Okay. All right, great. Vietnam knows how to cook. I never doubt this place. Whether familiar or foreign, they always find a way to make it work. Kebabs in Iran. Mmm. Banh mi in Vietnam. I love it. Boudin sausage in the U.S. I like that a lot. There's one thing that connects us all. It brings out the best in us. <laughs> Showing that despite our differences, you want to test the blood? What? Huh? At the end of the day, we're all people. <laughs> Sometimes very hungry people. Mm -mm -mm. So, this is an ode to the part of life that unifies us all food. It's time I'm letting you go. This time I know it for sure. Just thought I should let you know. Now, no one's no more. No. From researching and shooting. Oh to editing and mastering. Our 10-person best ever food review show team works hard to roll out the highest quality travel food entertainment twice a week. If you like what we do here, please consider supporting our Patreon. Patreon allows fans of the show to contribute a monthly sum and receive a load of extras like early video releases, private Q&As, and beyond. To learn more about our Patreon, check out the link in the description box down below. And if you can't give or don't even feel like it, that's okay too. <laughs> We're just happy you're here. Well, holy cow, what an episode that was. I want to say a huge thank you to Yuin for joining me today. You're welcome. I had a great time, and I hope you did too. Guys, we will see you next time. Thank you so much for watching. A peace. All right, well, let's go. Okay, I'm going to get an enema. I don't know, I think it'll help somehow. <laughs>